Welcome, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, to a, I guess, a shank rant. Uh, hasn't happened for a little bit. Honestly, can't remember the last time I recorded one of these, but nevertheless, people follow my channel, which I don't know why you would. It's a pretty awful channel. Um, and follow me on Twitter. Uh, you should definitely follow me on there because I'm basically awesome. People who follow me and know me know that I make these videos and rants, really, whenever there's something in the industry that really, you know, gets my attention. And this could be either good or bad. Um, and, you know, by good and bad, I mean strictly from a consumer policy perspective. It's interesting because I, I, I get a lot of claims coming my way saying, oh, man, you're anti-business. You just only look out for the consumer. It's like, well... Yeah, I, I am a consumer. I, I look out for consumers. I try to, at least, in the best way that I can. Um, it's not that, you know, I don't understand the business reasons why companies do what they do. It's just I disagree with them. And frankly, I don't care because I really do look out. I want the best for the consumer. Now, obviously, there are some policies, business policies rather, that actually mutually benefit both the consumer and a video game publisher in this instance. Uh, but yeah, there are policies that benefit both. Uh, one can point to CD Projekt Red's slew of policies that are really great, uh, benefiting both people. Microsoft's Xbox Play Anywhere, another fantastic pro-consumer yet pro-business policy. So the point is that there, this isn't a zero-sum game, right? You don't have to give up one thing for the other thing to win. In relation to this, you do not have to compromise consumer policy just for the sake of making a buck and that's what i feel like is happening here among other things but what am i talking about well today earlier today uh bethesda announced their their new game reviews policy which um if i've edited this correctly you should see on the screen now uh basically it's a relatively short post created by gary steinman who is the global content lead if you folks who have watched the post Bethesda at E3 events. Uh, you will see him at the post event kind of interviewing people. But anyway, it's a relatively short post, uh, but I'm going to read it here for you guys. Title is Bethesda and Game Reviews, and it says, quote, at Bethesda, we value media reviews. We read them, we watch them. We try to learn from them when they offer critique, and we understand their value to our players. Earlier this year, we released Doom. We sent review copies to arrive the day before launch, which led to speculation about the quality of the game. Since then, Doom has emerged as a critical and commercial hit, and is now one of the highest rated shooters of the past few years. They continue, With the upcoming launches of Skyrim Special Edition and Dishonor 2, we will continue our policy of sending media review copies one day before release, while we will continue to work with media, streamers, and YouTubers to support their coverage, both before and after release, we want everyone, including those in the media, to experience our games at the same time. We also understand that some of you want to read reviews before you make your decision, and if that's the case, we encourage you to wait for your favorite reviewers to share their thoughts. And then they go on and list the release dates for Skyrim Special Edition, which is October 28th, and Dishonor 2, which is November 11th. Those games are for PlayStation 4, Xbox, and PC. You should just play the PC versions. Just do it. Especially since Skyrim Special Edition is free if you own the game already. Anyway, there are a couple of things we need to tease apart here. There's actually um, there's quite a lot to look into, into this single sentence. Now, at first glance, this seems like they just want to give people their review copy one day before release. After all, they said, hey, look, we did the same thing in Doom. And Doom ended up being a good game. It was a critical success, and people actually liked it. And it was a technologically competent, sound, good quality game with really not that many bugs, as example, you know, Assassin's Creed Unity. However, if you dig deeper into this, which you should, because there's a lot that is not being said here, but is being heavily implied. And if you can peel back the layers and analyze this, you will really see this for what it is. And obviously, I have my bias here, but, you know, I can only provide my own analysis of this. It's quite worrying, actually. It's it's quite worrying. So let's let's start at the top of this paragraph, right? It says, they're basically saying, hey, the literally the first sentence, we value media reviews. So 
right there. They're, they're basically starting off saying, hey, we actually, we value the media. You know, we value the media reviews. Then they go on and say, we will continue our policy of sending media review copies one day before release. Now, here's the thing. These seem to me like very, very opposing sentiments. How can you value media reviews, but at the same time give media only one day, uh, you know, before the game is released to actually take a look at it? So let's look at this. Embargoes in this industry theoretically exist to provide people with an even playing field. And so basically people don't rush to put out their reviews, right? They have, everybody knows when the reviews can go live, when any material can go live and nobody can publish early and gain any sort of traffic advantage, click advantage, view advantage, what have you. So in theory, embargoes are meant to kind of provide that even playing field. Now, obviously, some people like Ubisoft with Assassin's Creed Unity infamously completely abused this policy. And they said that, hey, your embargo actually lifts 12 hours after the game has released. We all know how that turned out. That was a bad way to go about things. Here, I see this as another detriment. Why do I see this as a detriment? Well, It seems to me that this policy here of sending media review copies one day before release, okay, great. You know, this may benefit streamers and whatnot, because actually, if you go look around on YouTube, there are quite a few people streaming this game already. But it should be noted that at least in the streams that I have seen, I haven't seen any actual journalist, you know, traditional, quote unquote, traditional games journalist uh, streaming this game. I've seen a lot of YouTubers, a lot of streamers playing with this game, and that too, only the Xbox One copy. I have yet to see PS4 or PC copies floating around in the streams. So what this says to me is that this is basically ensuring that, you know, your journalists, your people that actually do the reviews, they're not getting the copies when they need to. So what does that mean? Well, okay, journalists, boom, here's your review copy one day before it releases. So now in order to get any sort of traffic or anything, they're going to have to rush to get their review out. Now, this may be less of an issue with Skyrim, but for Dishonored 2, I mean, you have one day to play this game and get your review out before the game launches. This, This effectively becomes a race then precisely the thing that an embargo is in theory meant to discourage you know an an embargo is meant to discourage these types of races to kind of get people to rush through the content so they have their their first you know their first we have to be first that's what an embargo is meant to do in part and providing code just one day before the game is released these journalists are going to get these copies and be like all right well shit, I need to write this and get, you know, get this out as quickly as possible so that we can get views and stuff like that. And that's, that's, that's very, very, that goes against really what an embargo is meant to do. And this, in fact, is, is an embargo. They're saying, hey, we're giving you copies one day before release. After that, whatever, you know? So to me, what this looks like is that they are embracing quote unquote new media, which is the streamers and uh, Twitch stream, uh, you know, YouTubers and all those people, but at the cost of traditional journalists who write physically, you know, actually, you know, with a pen and paper and type and all that stuff, they're, they're discouraging traditional journalists from getting their reviews and thoughts out there in the form of a finalized review this, compl- this directly leads into my next concern. Bethesda is a publisher. I'm not talking about Bethesda Game Studios. I'm talking about Bethesda Softworks. Okay, Bethesda Softworks is the publisher. Bethesda Game Studios is a studio that develops, they develop uh, Fallout and Skyrim and etc. What this policy effectively allows them to do is because, remember, what do they say in, in their uh, policy press release thing it says while we will continue to work with media streamers and youtubers to support their coverage both before and after release okay here's the thing these publishers select they have full control over who they send copies to so as a publisher 
In order to put your game in the best light, therefore to get the most positive coverage of your game out there, you're obviously naturally and logically, I might add, give early copies of your game to the YouTubers and streamers, in other words, influencers. You're going to give copies of your game to influencers who are fairly predictable, meaning who you can predict with relative accuracy that they will provide a positive outlook of your game to their viewers, to consumers, etc., to your potential future consumers, right? Now, here's the thing. A publisher has that right and has that ability, but this the dangerous part about this is, is that it really, again, if you look at this, it allows publishers to manipulate opinions of consumers. How are they doing so? Well, just like I said, they can pick and choose who they want to cover their game as a streamer, as a YouTuber. If somebody is being critical of their game, they don't have to send them a copy. So you can control the opinion with relative, you know, if you do it intelligently, you can control the opinion of the consumers by only providing the game to people who will positively cover your game. Meaning the impression that consumers will get out there is a positive one. And you will discourage criticism and critique. I personally think this, that's very, very, very dishonest thing to do. It really, really is because it's only ensuring that the consumers see the quote-unquote good opinions and not the quote-unquote bad opinions, even though if those bad opinions may be justified criticisms. The publisher can completely control that flow of information. Now, here's the thing. The publisher has the right to choose who they want to uh, you know, share their game with. But because I am very much pro-consumer. I personally believe that is a very, very dishonest thing to do. It is, in my opinion, it's very, very anti-consumer. It's not, a, it's not unexpected, but I consider it anti-consumer. Effectively, what this does is by only ensuring that positive coverage can be shown, it ultimately results in less accurate information to the consumer and like I mentioned previously, a rush to the bottom for uh, re reviews. And, you know, here's the thing. It doesn't really make sense, does it? From a, from a consumer standpoint and from just purely this, this, uh, this press release standpoint. Because they're saying here, quote, we try to learn from them when they offer critique, them being media. We try to learn from them when they offer critique. Okay. But here's the thing with that is that you can control that critique by sending it to people who only view your games positively, therefore ensuring that consumers only receive a very, very skewed opinion of this game from their influencers. That's dishonest. I consider that dishonest. I definitely consider that anti-consumer. The last paragraph here of note really, really gets me. They say, quote, we also understand that some of you want to read reviews before you make your decision. And if that's the case, we encourage you to wait for your favorite reviewers to share their thoughts, end quote. The hypocrisy and irony of this statement is, it beggars belief. It really, really does. Because really, if you really look at it, what does this say? It says, hey, if you really want to wait, don't pre-order your game, just wait. Just wait for the reviewers to give their reviews and then buy it. Don't pre-order it. But then, if I have the image pulled up, they go ahead and tweet this. This particular example from September 29th, 2016. What does this tweet say? Take back what's yours earlier with Dishonor 2 Early Access. Pre-order and play a day early. Yeah. Yeah. Does that not make sense to you? It shouldn't make any sense to anybody because on one hand, they're telling you right here, pre-order the game. But in the other hand, in their policy review, they're saying, hey, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait for thoughts from your reviewer before, before buying the game. So which is it, Bethesda? Do you want us to pre-order your game or do you want us to wait until our reviewer is out? Uh, you know, a review of the game is out from our favorite reviewer. Which, which one do you want us to do? It is pure hypocrisy and really shows the mindset of these publishers. And that's not to skip over the fact that, 
you look at here, they say, hey, we did this with Doom and it still sold well. So this tells you that there must have been somebody behind the scenes crunching the numbers saying, you know what? It really doesn't matter if we have an embargo, you know, if we release code one day before release or a month before release, people will still buy the game regardless. And again, from a financial standpoint, from a monetary business standpoint, it makes business sense. But is this a pro-consumer policy? It is not a pro-consumer policy. It really isn't. And let's recap why. Why I think this is not a pro-consumer policy. Number one, they explain that they value media reviews and they want to they, they learn from their critique. However, on the same hand, they can pick and choose exactly which YouTubers and streamers they want to share their code with, thus ensuring that only positive views of this game are shown before release of the game. Perfect example of this. Look at all the Skyrim streams out today. Number two, they're sending media review copies only one day before release. This thoroughly throws journalists out of the equation. This is basically ensuring to Bethesda that journalists are not going to be part of the equation, that they're only going to rely on quote unquote new media for coverage and not on traditional media like the written word. Not only is this again, controlling the flow of information, but it, it is it brings with it a huge disadvantage to those traditional journalists and their consumers and their readers. Because once again, these journalists need to ru are, they're going to feel the pressure to rush out reviews, which is going to be filled, obviously, with possibly inaccurate information. It's not fair to consumers. It's definitely not fair to the traditional journalists. And number three, the hypocrisy that Bethesda showcases here. While on one hand saying that, hey, if you want to wait for reviews, wait for your favorite reviewer to give his or her thoughts. And in the other hand saying, hey, pre-order our game. Completely conflicting messaging, completely opposing thoughts and ideologies at play here. And this showcases the thought process of these publishers. They simply don't care. They, they just don't care. Now, no doubt, some people will come to the rescue and defense of Bethesda. Um, and you need to ask why. You know, what, what do you owe this publisher? Really, what do you owe this publisher? They owe you something, right? Because you're, if you're... If they're asking you to buy something with your money and hand over your hard-earned money, they need to provide a product, a quality product, and do so in an honest, open manner. One may argue that by displaying this policy, they're being open and transparent, but I, you could also be successfully argued that by displaying this policy, they're just showcasing their hand and the many flaws, anti-consumer sentiments, dishonest policies, and quite frankly, hypocrisy at work at Bethesda. That's all I have to say, guys. Like if you liked this video, dislike if you disliked it, and yeah, I'll catch you later. Peace out.